We are here with Mark Whitwell to discuss the recent events with Kalstrup Desca Char. Hi, Mark. Hi. Thanks, Kelsey. Hi. What do the recent accusations of Kalstrup Desca Char mean to you as a student of Christian Macharya? Look, it's a universal story. When you give a young man or any man power, but you do not also give the gifts of uh, intimate life, how to actually come into a mutuality, a deep abiding intimacy with the feminine then that man uses his secular power, you know, even religious power is secular power, it's the way to manipulate social circumstance, and he uses that to try to get what he intuitively knows he can feel or what is missing from his life, you know, and it's a deep sadness on us. So it's a tragedy for me that, you know, one of our bright leaders, the very grandson of our of the grandfather of yoga, of contemporary yoga, has come to this tragedy and, you know, uh, fallen on his knees, fallen on his face, fallen from grace, you know. But he is a victim too, you know, let's be very clear about it, this world is deeply tragic and dysfunctional in the area of sexuality, intimacy, you know, it is, we have millions of women enslaved right now, you know, and we have many, many millions more who exploit that situation and cannot come into <clears throat> honest, true sexual intimacy. So they do it sideways in this sickness. And it's a universal, it's in all institutions, you know, we know about the Catholic Church and all the rest of it, you know, all the Swamis who came to America, they all got into this trouble. You, know. you <coughs> give man empowerment through some sort of like yoga technique or whatever and build up and, and put them in a position of social status then it inevitably happens that it just comes out their sexuality comes out as a <clears throat> inappropriate you know explosion of energy rather than uh, a continuity of feeling in an ordinary life you know. and what was krishnamacharya's teaching to you on yoga and sexuality well just that yoga is intimacy with life. Yoga is intimacy with reality itself. That which beats the heart and moves the breath and moves the sex and grows the trees and the flowers, you know, and blows the wind from island to island, you know, and moves the ocean. This is, it is our intimacy with life itself is yoga. The special technique of yoga is the union of opposites in our own system. You see, we have inhale, receive, exhale, strength. Hatha yoga, strength that is receptive. This is the male-female qualities of our own embodiment. You know. So it is a deeply sexual practice. Doing yoga is love-making with life. And if you do that, it is, it is interpreted immediately into the capability of being intimate with somebody else. To receive another, you see, to be there for another as strength, but also to receive another. Your own embodiment becomes sensitive, then you become sensitive to another. You know, this is the great yogi's instruction, love thy neighbor as thyself. Christ that yogi, love thyself, you see. When this is not practiced and you try to do sexuality, either suppress it and try to get away from it, or you, it comes out badly in mistaken social disasters, you know. Mm. So pretty much all we've got in the world, you know. So we must educate the world how to how to live, how to be intimate with life, with their own life, you know, not deny the male female union. I mean, our good friend Alan Watts said, this is how we all got here, you know, this is how we enter this universe, sex, you know, the male-female union, no one gets away from that. It's the basis of all existence. And what was Krishnamacharya's teaching on traditional yogic cultures that were um, more broadly practicing Hatha Yoga? Well, one thing he made personally very clear to me, is he said that yoga is for an ordinary family life. He said the best cave for yoga 
is a pleasurable family life, you know, in a very dignified way of, you know, enter into intimate relationship, enter into yogic relationship. You know. He also was emphatic that the translation of the word brahmacharya was the study of Brahman through right relatedness. That's what it meant. It did not mean celibacy. He said there was never celibacy in yogic culture. This came as a religious ideal later on in the invention of doctrine, the invention of Buddhism and Christianity, this idea of the monastic life or um, going within, residing as witness only to all arising conditions, this sort of universal idea residing as awareness only as everything drops away and you sit in yourself as awareness. Uh, this created that damage because it dissociated humanity from our own reality. So he's saying yoga is intimacy with all ordinary conditions. Then we know the source of all ordinary conditions. This is yoga. So these higher ideals of Buddhism, residing as awareness for example, it comes as a, a siddhi or a gift of your life of intimacy. But if you try to do it too soon, then you're just dissociating yourself and then your sex is going to come out badly. So the first spiritual responsibility is to heal this sexuality, to engage it appropriately, you know, come into right relation, relatedness with, with your life in all ordinary ways. So given that you and Kaustub had a similar teaching and it was uh, sex positive to a certain extent, um, although limited, why have you, why has it translated to abuse in Kaustub's situation? Well, India is a deeply misogynist society. And I have to say, Krishnamacharya did a huge work to lift that misogynism off his own society. You know, he pointed to ancient texts to prove that women in ancient times were educated fully in religious life and were educated to practice yoga. You know, they were much, you know, yogic adepts as male, you know. And this was his emphatic point of view, which was radical to uh, the orthodoxy of his time, and still is, you know. To allow women to chant Veda is, wow, <laughs> to an orthodox Hindu, that's, that's just not on, you know. So he did his best. But, you know, the society is deeply suppressed. And I just feel that that suppression is not, uh, <laughs> is not gone. 